And President Obama got the stiff arm from House Republicans last night. Well, today, he got a strange invitation from conservative talk show king Rush Limbaugh, saying he wants to personally present a stimulus proposal to the president. I'm willing to go up there and, and, and share an adult beverage and some Wagyu beef to persuade him of the wisdom of my plan. I am willing. I am willing, ladies and gentlemen, to build a road, to build a bridge from the EIB network to the White House. <laughs> there you have it, Sharon. An adult beverage, he says. At the same time, Rush Limbaugh said today, no, 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 he may have a stimulus proposal, but he's not the leader of the Republican Party. Look it. I am a guy on the radio, and I am, I am not by any means an official leader of the Republican Party. I'm a conservative. The official leaders of the Republican Party are fighting over who their ultimate leader is going to be. Hint, hint, it's Sarah Palin. <laughs> Joining us now is Ann Cornblue, White House reporter for The Washington Post. Ann, good to see you. Good um, to see you. There's no doubt Rush Limbaugh has been certainly get a lot, getting a lot of attention here on MSNBC, and uh, he's challenging the president, saying he wants to deliver his own stimulus proposal. He's even got a piece in the Wall Street Journal today. What about that, though? Is he a critical voice on the right for Obama, and was Obama wrong to engage him at first? Well, I don't know if there's any right or wrong here. I think there are some Democrats I've heard from who are thrilled that Obama would engage him and be, sort of bestow upon him the strength of being the uh, leader of the Republican Party. Um, you know, I think Republicans certainly on the Hill would dispute that he is their leader uh, since they are the ones who are elected at this point. But I think the fact that we're talking about him, the fact that he's been able to get attention in ink over the last few days suggests something of a void in the Republican side. They obviously went through some big losses this year and are still trying to find their way. Um, and he he is clearly reveling in having sort of renewed attention at a time when there isn't so much attention on one particular person up on the Hill. You know, um, Robert Gibbs, who we just heard for, from in that press briefing, was on the Today Show this morning, and he was asked whether, essentially, um, when the president told Republicans that they should stop listening to Rush Limbaugh because he's responsible for the fact that not, not much has gotten done in Washington, what that means. Let's listen to what Gibbs said. I think what the president said is true, is if, if leaders in Washington from either party are just listening to one person rather than listening to the millions of voices of their constituents and of the American people, it's usually where Washington goes wrong. What about that? Do you think we'll see uh, the White House stop engaging Rush Limbaugh? I saw, it was noticed that, that Nancy Pelosi was asked today about Rush Limbaugh, and she said, I don't, I'm Speaker of the House, I don't need to address that. It's hard to see this being a real ongoing conversation. It's all, even harder to imagine that Obama is going to invite Rush Limbaugh up to the White House for the adult beverage and the Wagyu beef. Um, but I think, you know, <laughs> he was trying to make a point at that moment in time, which is he wanted to talk to the lawmakers themselves. <clears throat> that he wasn't trying to talk to people on the radio or commentators or pundits, that he wanted to actually talk to them. And um, at the end of the day, he was rebuffed. So I don't know. I, but it's hard to imagine him actually continuing this kind of the conversation. All right, Ann Cornblow with The Washington Post. Ann, thanks so much. I want Thank to bring you. in Aaron Burnett, of course, with CNBC. And uh, Aaron, I know you spoke with Rush Limbaugh today. He is trying to be a voice on the stimulus, calling it the porculus bill. Yeah. What did he tell you today? You know, it was very interesting, Nora. I think, you know, recently he's gotten a lot of commentary for, for making um, the, a statement along the lines of uh, he hoped Obama would fail. And I think in the interview with us today, he, he was very specific to say uh, he supported the president. He just doesn't support his policy. So I, I think it's clear he He's trying to make a, a real policy statement here rather than just saying something outrageous. Um, and, and when you actually read the op-ed that he wrote in the Wall Street Journal, there were some interesting ideas in there. One of them was cutting the corporate tax. That's not something in there, but a lot of lawmakers and economists think it could be a good idea. Another idea he had uh, was slashing capital gains. So both of those are, are serious things to say. And um, Nora, it brings me to, to your, when you were talking with a couple of the people in Congress, um, you know, I spoke to Richard Shelby a few minutes ago and he said he hopes no Republican votes for this. Um, I don't know if it's too much to say that there's a mutiny here, but there is a real dissatisfaction, not just among Republicans, but a lot of moderate Democrats, about what's actually in this stimulus and that maybe it's a lot more of the same rather than something that signals change and a new way of thinking about things. No doubt. And, Erin, uh, we do have part of that clip from your interview with Rush Limbaugh. Let's play it and talk about it on the other side. 
I want him to succeed in bringing the country around, but the policies he's announced are not going to do it. I want the policies to fail. I want America to succeed. I love the country. You just talked about that. Essentially, yeah, he's mm -hmm. not saying that he... Uh he wants the president to fail. He wants the policies to fail. But right. on that note, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, and certainly from your perspective on Wall Street, the Republicans in the House had a lot of things that they wanted changed. But as I spoke with some of them yesterday, including uh, Congressman Pence, I mean, he admitted, I asked him, why couldn't you get any changes done? Are you guys essentially impotent? And he responded, well, yeah, the truth hurts. And then I suggested that maybe he should have Nancy Pelosi over for drinks. There's a lot of talk about having drinks <laughs> anyway in this whole thing. But it's different in the Senate. And even though Shelby is going to be Senator No, like he usually is, right. there are going to be some changes in the Senate, right? And how is Wall Street looking at those? The AMT, maybe right. some more business tax cuts. I mean, tweaks around the edge that could get additional Republican support. Will Wall Street then react favorably? Will we see the market go up when this thing finally gets signed? Well, that I wish I knew the answer to that, but I would say, Nora, you, you raise a great point about some of the changes around the edges and particularly that, uh, that patch for the AMT. Uh, that's something people will, will be well received. Um, look, the one big disappointment on Wall Street, it's sort of be careful what you want. Wall Street was so skeptical of this infrastructure spending and thinking that it would be wasted. And now you look at, well, as little as 5% of the money could be going to infrastructure. Structure. Now Wall Street saying, well, that's what we actually need for this country to, to, to be prosperous and to remain, uh, frankly, the country where businesses want to come and do business. And they're very upset that there isn't much in there. So all of that is serious changes that we may not get. They do like the AMT. All in, they don't really like this bill. But I would say this, Nor, if we don't get a bill, it could be catastrophic. At least that's what people say. Uh, you know, who knows? But they do expect a bill. And if we don't get one, that could be very bad for stocks. Great point, Aaron. And the other thing we didn't get time to talk about, too, but the Buy American provision, uh, which I think we'll uh, see a lot of heat on that. Aaron, yeah, we're going to totally see right. you see. Good to see you, Good Nora. get with Rush Limbaugh today, and thanks so much. All right.